the senior pastor of the Free and Independent Apostolic Church right here in the beautiful city of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Listen, today is a great day to have good church, but we got some rules. We call them CDC rules. We have capacity, which means we do not fill the building. Also, we wear our masks, and when we wear our masks, we cover it with our nose and our mouth covered together. We also have sanitizer stations where you will wash your hands and you'll get sanitized. We also social distance six feet if possible. Listen, these are the rules so that you can be blessed, you can bless God, and you can be saved. So please follow the rules so we can have great church. Listen, today is going to be a great day to hear from God. Intense prayer should be starting right about now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we lift them on this tonight? Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence. God, we thank you, God, for the activity of our limbs. God, we thank you for clothing us in our right mind. God, we thank you for being such a good God. God, we thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. God, we thank you for being the Lord God, our provider. God, we thank you for being such a good God. You said in your word, God, Luke 1 and 37, that nothing will be impossible without God. God, so we know that we can do all things with you. God, we are reminded by the series that we're bringing order back into your house. We're bringing order back into your kingdom. God, order our steps. God, let our conversations be worthy. Let our feet walk where you want us to go. Let us hear what you want us to hear. Let us speak what you want us to speak. God, have your way here in this place tonight. God, have your way in this place tonight. God, have your way in this place tonight. God, give us fresh revelation. God, speak to us. God, deliver us. God, encourage us. God, help us to be who you called us to be. And God, now we pray for the ones that are on the way. God, we ask for travel and mercy. God, we pray that we don't leave the same way that we came. We pray that we get what we come in the house tonight to get. We pray that our hearts be respected. We pray that our ears be open. God, we pray that we're corrected. God, we pray for our leaders. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you anoint the man of God afresh. We pray that you download revelations. We pray that you talk to him, God. We pray that you allow him to give us what we need tonight. We're not leaving the same way that we came. We're coming to get everything that we come for tonight. We pray for our spiritual mother right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you strengthen and renew, revive, God, restore in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise tonight. God, we give you honor tonight. God, we give you glory tonight. God, we call on you, God. We need you tonight. God, I'm asking you to heal us from the inside out. God, I'm asking that you heal us from the inside out. God, heal us tonight. Don't let us leave the way that we came. God, touch our mind. Touch our thoughts. Don't let us see things the same way. God, let us see things the way that you should have us to see them. God, we thank you on tonight. God, I come to give you praise on tonight. I come to give you glory on tonight. God, I come to worship you tonight. God, I come to thank you on tonight. Because it could have been another way. It could have been another way. It could have been another way. But God, you saw fit to let us be here. And for that, I'm thankful. For that, God, I give you praise. For that, I give you honor. God, I come to pull on you tonight. I come to pull on heaven tonight. God, I'm coming. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for delivering me. Thank you, God. Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Where would you be? Hallelujah, Jesus. And God will be forever grateful to give you the praise. God, we thank you for the souls that are here. We thank you for the souls that are on the way. God, we thank you for filling this place. God, we thank you for saturating this place with your Shekinah glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the praise. God, we give you the honor. Come on, say something to them. Let them hear your voice on tonight. Let them know that you're here. 
that you're here. Let's do a corporate prayer on tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And God will be forever grateful to give your name the praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Put those blessed hands together like you love him. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands, everybody, all over the house. Come on, do we love him tonight? Are we grateful tonight for how, how good God has been to us? Come on, clap your hands in the sanctuary. Hands lifted all over the house. We love you tonight. We lift you up tonight. And we give you honor and praise. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Come on, in the sanctuary, let's lift it up. How much we love him tonight. Come on, everybody. We want big praise team tonight. Raise it up and say. I love you. Come on, in the room.
everybody sing it. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you forever. I love you forever. That's it, T. Come on, everybody in the room, clap your hands as the word comes. Come on tonight, we, we praise him, we glorify him. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most greatest power. You are the most high God going through. You are most high. You are the most high God. Raise it up and tell you. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Raise it up and tell you. all over the building. Come on. Come on. Bless someone tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without the music, come on. Open up your mouth. Give God praise. Don't play. Come on. Give God some praise. Open up your mouth. Right where you are. Right where you are. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, for he's good. And his mercy endure it forever. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Real praises got an open mouth, a clapped hand, real praises know how to give it to them. Come on, no theater, just you and God. There it is. No theater, just you and God. You and God. You and the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he's an awesome God. He is an amazing God. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah. That's it. That's absolutely what he wants. That's absolutely what he wants.
Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, when you got authentic worship, we wait. When you have authentic worship, we wait. We don't mind. We don't mind this audience of one with him. And when you're authentic as an audience of one, you and God, everyone else is extra. But when it's an audience of one, you and God, hallelujah, for he is good. He's merciful. And his grace endureth forever and ever. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. We want to try to put a bow on this series as we are transitioning here in another week to Resurrection Weekend. Talk to me. Where the worst judgment against the most innocent person was perpetrated. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Don't really know why they call it Good Friday because it was a bad Friday for him. But his worst moment was our best moment. His worst moment, most humiliating moment, was the best moment in our whole existence. Every Friday on this certain weekend, we celebrate death burial, talk back if you know you're holy, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We should not wait till that day to celebrate him. For the gospel should be preached every time you hear a man preaching. Somewhere in that sermon, the gospel should be preached. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. We, we, uh, we appreciate the Lord for what's coming. We appreciate for what he's already done. But literally, there was no order in that court. There was no order at all in that court. That court was disordered from the beginning. The time of the trial, the place of the trial, and who was on trial. All out of order. But tonight, I want to talk about something that uh, deals with something God tells none of us to do, but you find it done in a courtroom all day, and that's judging. It's interesting God tells us not to judge. But in the courtroom, that's what they're there to do. Matter of fact, there's a person that's called the judge. It's his job to judge what comes before him. He is the God of that room. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. He can put you in jail or he can give you mercy. He can set aside judgment. Or he can give you the harshest judgment of your life. Y'all quiet. So he's considered the God of that room. When he comes in, everyone stands. All talking ceases. When he sits down, the bailiff tells everyone else to have a seat. 
Then they say, order in the court. And then the bailiff brings the next case before him. And then they have to get the information. I'm going to teach today. Then they have to, watch this, deliberate. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. In other words, their judgment or their decision must be a deliberate one. It can't be one they go home and say, should I have done it? A lot of times people get off when they're guilty because they don't get enough information on them. Or the information is tainted. It's called tainted. When, when who had the uh, weapon next? Did it go into the right places? Oh, I can't get no church. Uh, from hand to hand, was it signed off? And where did it rest? Y'all quiet. And now that it got back here, who broke what they call the chain of custody? So tonight I want to talk about a few things and highlight a few scriptures and then we're going to prepare ourselves for this weekend and prayerfully my musician staff will be here. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. So he tells us to judge not or we shall be judged, but if you happen to make that decision, be careful how you make it. Because however you make a decision, when it's your turn, it's going to be made for you. Oh, I can't get no church in here. Because there's too many of us judging folks for their stuff, but when it comes your way, you want grace where you didn't put grace at. Y'all can't get, y'all quiet, the Beatitudes say, y'all quiet, he who gives mercy shall obtain, talk back to me, saints of God, mercy. How often do we not give what we want to get back? Stop judging. Especially if you ain't got the information. Oh, y'all, look at y'all. I'm trying to help the church because this is where the church is now. This is where the universal church is. It's a deliberate, judgy type of church. It's a church that seems to get off on failure. Seem to get off on people's shortcomings until theirs is exposed. Well, I ain't gonna get no church here now. John chapter 5, verse number 30, good wisdom from Jesus. I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge. And my judgment is just. Are y'all with me? Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. This is why we can't judge. Because our judgment always leads us to what we want. Jesus said, I won't judge, but if I do judge, I don't seek, y'all right, my advantage on your failure is to do God's will and to judge you to the place where you get back in place, not you're so embarrassed that you won't see the place. He says, when I judge, if I judge, and I can judge, I am God in the flesh. I still don't judge to my own advantage. Y'all quiet. So when you do judge, you judge to your advantage. What are you going to get out of it? What are you standing to get out of somebody else's failure? What do you stand to get? And, 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 and it bugs me because the fact of the matter is nothing that you get from somebody's failure is valuable. 
Oh, I can't get no church up in here. It's not valuable at all. All it is is your opportunity. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. To rub something in somebody's face. It ain't paying you nothing. I can't get no church. It ain't helping your life be better. But yet you do it and you judge. And you don't judge well. I said you don't judge well. You judge your friends better than you judge your enemies. Oh, I can't get no church here. Let it be your homie. I can't get no church. You give them, you give them two, four, five, six, seven, eight chances. Let it be somebody you can't stand for no reason at all. Oh, I can't get no church here because the church are full of people that got art with people that don't, they don't even know. I can't get no church here. I don't know why I don't like you. I just don't like you. Proverbs 4 and 7, then I'll go to my notes. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. It is the principles of which we stand. Wisdom. Wisdom is so anointed that there is a spirit or, or, or there's a prophetic spirit called wisdom. There's a prophetic spirit called knowledge. Which means for four folks that are catch it, wisdom is prophetic. You ain't got to be a prophet to have a prophetic gift of wisdom. And too many of y'all mess around talking about this is the Lord. When it ain't the Lord, it's your wisdom talking. So when it's your wisdom talking, you ought to tell people this is wisdom. This is a word of wisdom for you, not prophetically God. I told y'all why people use God so much, right? They use God because their name don't hold nothing. So when you don't have a great name, y'all ain't going to say nothing. You have to say God to manipulate people to hear. See, but the Bible never said that God was going to give you a great title. So I don't know why y'all keep holding on the title when he said, I'll make your name great. I ain't going to get no help in here. I'll make your name great. Not your title, your name. Who is that apostle? It's a whole lot of apostles. Who is that prophet? It's a whole lot of them. Who is that bishop? A whole lot of them. But who is that? That's Keith Kendall Curry. There's only one of him right there. Somebody holler, make my name great. What if God said, I'll make your name great if you give up your title? Would you exchange a name for a title? Now, don't ask that. Don't answer that now. Come on, because y'all going to run out here and God tell you tomorrow to do it. And y'all be like running and mad, talking about Resurrection Sunday, I'm going to die just like Jesus. Because some of y'all, if God asks for your title, you'll die. You'll die right where you stand. Because you have not did anything to make your name anything to stand on its own. So you will die because your title is the only thing that gets you any kind of respect. Because you have done nothing with your name. Y'all quiet. Your name is synonymous with liar. Your name is synonymous with supplanter. Your name is synonymous with hoe. Your name is synonymous with pimp. Your name is synonymous... So when your name is bad, you pick up a title. You understand, right? What's the verdict? That's my topic. Three folks mad. What's the verdict? What is the verdict? Verdict means the finding or answer of a jury given to the court concerning a matter. Verdict means submitted to their judgment. Verdict simply means a decision. You've heard everything, now what's your decision? You've heard what you need to hear. They said what they needed to say. Y'all quiet. You thought about it. Now I need to know what is your decision. 
Oh, y'all quiet in here. And you know you cannot wait too long to make a decision because after a while, the judge will say it'll be a hung jury. Because y'all, y'all, we can't be in here for two weeks trying to get your decision. Obviously, you can't come to one. And if you can't come to one, I can't get no church here. We're going to have to go ahead and hang the jury. And then I'm going to have to acquit you with prejudice. Tonight we speak on verdicts. This is a very important portion of the court proceeding because you are almost at the end of the trial. And it's time for a verdict to be reached and a sentence to be given. It's time for a verdict to be reached. And when the verdict is reached, it ain't that ain't it. Because then there's a sentence behind the verdict. Or oh, y'all quiet. You do know there's two types of testimonies. The first testimony is your guilt. The second testimony is what should happen to you. When you're, when you, when you're looking at the second testimony, that's where you get most of your character witnesses. So if you was a first-time offender and you'll have a whole lot of people come in and say how good you are and maybe this is a mistake. But if you kill somebody, you ain't going to say nothing. Then the deceased will have a character uh, 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 testimony to come and talk about how good the person that you killed was. And now that you kill somebody, they don't have a mother, they don't have a father. Somebody don't have an uncle. Somebody don't have a son. Somebody doesn't have a. And how much you have affected somebody's life by taking somebody out. See, a lot of y'all do stuff, but you don't watch this. You don't watch this. Understand the effect that you have on people when you do it. What effect is on, did you have when you lied? What effect did you have, y'all quiet, when you gossip? What effect did you have on everybody when you did what you did? We always get to the point where, bless God, where we just... Amen. Want to repent, but you sometimes you got to repent not to just a person. You got to repent to who you affected. I, I repent to the church. I repent to the pastor. I repent. Y'all quiet because you didn't affect just that person you hurt, but you stopped everything. Everybody had to stop to deal with you. Everybody had to stop. So now it's like you on a repentance tour. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to go on a tour of repentance. And here's what repentance mean. And if you get mad, that's all right. That means I'm doing well. Repentance mean I'll never do it again. I'll never act that way again. I'll never say that again. Some of y'all ain't repented. You just said sorry. I, y'all, and you're just sorry that you got caught. Repentance mean I'm turning away from that behavior. Turning away from that attitude. I'm turning away from that mindset. Talk back to me now. Our text scripture, only got 500 words. Our text scripture is is the jumping point to our body of scripture. We are going to use tonight to get to the verdict portion. Watch this of the text as we are closing out this series and preparing for the new one. This portion has everything to do with order, here it is, information and wisdom and judgment. Order, information, wisdom, and judgment. It's in that order. First, there must be order. Then there must be information then the information must be dealt with with wisdom. Then there must be a judgment behind the information. I forgot to tell you at the end, there's a sentence. And you got to be careful. I'm already going. I'm already there. You got to be careful when people are gathering information. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. And some of y'all, hey amen, I'm just going to let, I ain't going to say nothing. Baby, you better tell your side. I'm telling you right now, you better open your mouth. 
Y'all quiet. I'm sick of I'm just going to say, hold my peace. Or hold your peace if you want to. Hold your peace. You got a mouth. Open it. Y'all quiet. We don't see it in the Bible how so many people have got messed up because there was information gathered, but no, watch this, but no opportunity to defend themselves. And when it didn't have an opportunity to defend themselves, Jesus came on the scene to acquit them because they didn't have good defense. Uh oh, so you'll get acquitted when you don't have good defense. Everyone Jesus, everyone Jesus acquitted was guilty and deserved a sentence. But they gathered information wrong. They gathered information wrong. They went at it the wrong way. And now even though the person is wrong, you, you worse because you didn't let it play out like it should to get the sentence they deserve. All right, for you. But we would like to call the judgment a decision. I don't like that word judgment because the Bible tells us not to judge, so I'm going to shift it to decision. I'm going to shift it to decision. It is also interesting in the court of law that decisions cannot be made without the required information. Even if they can make a decision, you will hear the jury from the back room ask the judge for transcripts of the court's proceedings because we want to read what we heard. We want, to, we want to read what we heard because, because watch this, because, because the way they said it may sway us. So we don't want to hear what they said. We want to read what they said. Because if I read it, then I can look at it the right way. But if the way they say it, some people say it real hard. Some people say it real nice. Some people act like they're innocent when they're guilty. They can fool themselves. That's how good they are. So I don't want to hear their voice. I want to read their words. You understand? I want to be able to see it for what it really is. There's a lot of folks in church that do a whole lot of crap, and they look innocent, and they're the most guilty people in the church. And then they lying, talking about, I try to do it the God's way. You lie. Stop trying to put God on your stupidity. You opened your mouth. You should have kept it shut. Y'all quiet. You cannot be trusted. Just keep your mouth shut. I tried to warn him. You ain't trying to warn nobody. You ain't prophetic. Somebody told you that. Y'all quiet. The Lord told me. No, the phone call told you. Text message told you. Going to dinner with the wrong person told you. Y'all quiet. How did you get this information? I know y'all ain't gonna like this sermon today because it ain't a whole bunch of hollering and screaming and hooping and running and jumping. How did you get this information? Y'all quiet. Watch this. He says, it is not just important to have information, but it's also important to have wisdom to know you have the right information. Can I say this to five folks that got discernment because everybody don't have it, but go, come on and, and just, just go with me. You have to listen to the Holy Ghost when folks telling you stuff. Oh, I can't get in all y'all y'all quiet. Cause they can cry, they be crying in tears. Be, don't you don't you let that get in your heart. Don't you let them crocodiles' tears get in your heart. I watch folk cry and be like, get on out of here, cause you're lying. Get on out of here. They be like, you just mean. No, I just you just a liar. Get on out of here. And God said he hate a liar, and a liar when I tarry in his sight. This is gonna be hard tonight, but just come on, let's go. Very interesting. I got a lot of interesting today. That in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 9, when God gave Solomon a blank check, talk back to me, told Solomon, 
you were so anointed and you've done so well after your father, you can have whatever you want to have. Oh, I can't get in no church. Whatever you want, you can see. I ain't gonna talk to y'all because y'all too busy, amen, thinking about your poverty that you can't think about God bringing you out. You can have whatever you want. And some of y'all are broke because your spirit is broke. You can't live holy for two days. So therefore, God cannot look at you and say, I'll give you what you want. But I dare you to live holy for a good year and watch God whisper in your ear, I got something for you. Because holiness pays off. You don't understand that, right? Holy Ghost Mama, I feel it now. Holy Ghost Mama said, put your time in. Hey, payday is coming after a while. Good God Almighty. You got to be able to punch that clock, though. You got to make sure you got all your hours in. You can't be cheating on the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody, tell somebody, I got to punch the clock now. I got to punch the clock. Listen, I don't care where you are right now in the things of God. Maybe this is your first day of punching the clock. Maybe you shifted, almost tried to quit the job. I'm rehiring you. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, I got to punch the clock now. Says whatever you want. Now, 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 prophet, I could flip this, really flip this, and tell you that after all this is said, if you next read the next verse, the Bible says that nobody preach it, but prophets should know it. The Bible says the next verse, then he woke up. Don't go to it. Just leave it alone. Trust me. So everybody is preaching that God told Solomon that he can have whatever he want, but the next verse says, and then he woke up, which simply means, was it real or was it just a dream? Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Y'all quiet. And if it was a dream, it may not have been a dream. Watch this. It could have been a vision. How do you say it could have been a vision? Because everything God said in the vision, Solomon got. You understand that? So therefore, we just preaching it out of context. It was not a verbal conversation. It was a prophetic, y'all quiet, conversation between God and Solomon. And it was so prophetic and so in tune with God that even the devil could not stop it because he was not invited to the party. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. And I'm trying to tell 15 people that God is getting ready to talk to some of y'all that ain't nobody invited but you and him. Y'all, woo, oh God, I, will, I dare somebody say, I'm ready for that conversation. Now watch yourself, watch yourself now. Watch yourself now. Watch yourself now. Watch yourself talking about you ready for a conversation now. Pump, pump the brakes on the conversation now. Because once you have that kind of conversation, you can't flip no more. Once you have that conversation, you can't turn down no more. Once you got that conversation, you can't give up no more. Once you have that conversation, you can't turn back on God. Because that conversation causes God to watch this catapult you to your next level of anointing. And then he expecting a holy life in return. Uh, look at somebody tell somebody God wants his return. Yeah, it's like income tax. Oh, I can't get no church here. And now all y'all trying to file because all this new money y'all getting, y'all looking for a return. Y'all y'all quiet. Y'all looking for something back for all you did all year. Well, God is getting ready to put some stuff on you. Watch this. That's going to demand a return from you. says whatever you want he said I'll give it to you you can have it and Solomon broke it down he says give therefore thy servant an understanding heart help me to judge thy people that I may discern all right y'all ain't gonna help me between good oh I need to discern which one of these folks lying now, I'm going to show you in the scripture where this comes, where it's going to help him, where it's going to help him later on. I need to discern who's lying. I need to discern who, you know where I'm going. I need to discern who's telling the truth. I need discernment because I'm sick of believing in folks, y'all quiet here, that, you, that nobody can believe in. I am the king, so everything that I say is going to affect the whole nation, so I need discernment that I don't follow behind a liar. And I'm not swayed. By emotions. Uh oh. I'm not swayed by feelings. He says that I might discern between good and bad. 
Now, this is what I like about what he says at the end. For who is able to judge? Who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Who can do this? So obviously, my father couldn't. Okay, I'll leave that alone. Even though he got a throne in heaven, he couldn't make the temple, which he was supposed to make. But on his way to having a throne in heaven, he spread too much innocent blood. Which means for five folks that'll catch it, that some of y'all, amen, ain't gonna never get what God really want for you because you hurt too many people. Okay, y'all just missed that. He told David, you cannot make my temple. Your son will do it because you did too much. I love you, but you're too much. Oh, y'all quiet. See, y'all think that y'all going to sit there and have something to do with God, and then you mess him over, and he never changed his mind about your destination. My father said something that, uh, that blessed me, and it made me really look at myself and some of the things that I've done in my life. And sometimes when you hear it from another platform, it makes more sense to you than you thought. My leader is, is one of the national, most national prophets in the world, period. He's that. We don't have to sit there and try to butter it up. That's what he is. But he said to me, he said, son, I should have had, uh, and he called some big names. He said he called some big gigantic uh, 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 names with some big people. I won't call no names out. He said, I should have the ministry they have and the money they have. He said, because I have an anointing greater than theirs. Watch the transparent piece, and this is where y'all ain't going to like it. He said, but I sin too much against God. Oh, y'all ain't going to, y'all just missed that. And now what I have is a blessing, but it's not what I should have, and I ain't got nobody to blame but me, so I got to be okay with what I have, knowing that what I have is what God has blessed me with. I've done too much against God. So even though he's blessed me, he hasn't given me what he said he was going to give me the first time. And it ain't God's fault. Y'all quiet. I said, y'all quiet. And I said to myself, so that's why I'm like that, huh? Oh, see, I was transparent. Oh, wow, okay. That's why. See, y'all don't want to do that because y'all y'all want to run out and talk about, no, nah, but I believe God going to bless me. How are you going to bless you over your leader? If he's putting your leader through that kind of process, what makes you think your process is going to be better? I'd be crazy to say, you know, Dad, that was you, but God's going to do something different for me. You understand? You understand? You understand? I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a, I'm going to do a little better than you then because, uh, then God will put you to sleep and talk, start talking about all the stuff that you've done. And some of the stuff that y'all still doing that you're not, y'all quiet. Behind closed doors that you're not repentant of, nor you trying to tell anybody about. Can what you do survive cross-examination? Oh, y'all quiet. Because it's easy for you to do a testimony with your lawyer. Because this is your lawyer's job, watch this, to tell it your way. But what happens when the devil comes to the scene? And he starts cross-examining your secrets. Because you do know he has access to you, right? Cross, somebody say cross-examination. Cross -examination. In, in the book of Jashir, while Abram was on his way to sacrifice Isaac, I believe it was one of the, it was one of the most uh, imposing court scenes that was not in court that I've ever read. Your Bible makes it look like Abraham just went and he just crucified or get ready to sacrifice a son with no emotion. 
Sometimes the Bible robs us when it don't put everything in there. It robs us of the emotion so it makes us feel like if we have any emotion, we must be going to hell. Oh, I can't get no church up in here. When that Bible, them 66 books that's written by the Roman Empire, that's canonized and written for you, and you don't go read nothing else that, that, that gives you the emotion of the text, it makes you feel like to be saved, you got to be a robot. I can't get no church here. But I'm so glad that there's books, y'all quiet, that has been unearthed and the apostles of God that he gives revelation to lets us see Abraham as someone who did it, not wanting to do it, but wanting to obey God beyond his emotions. And I'm trying to find some folks that know God has asked you for some hard stuff, but you're in the season of your life where you're obeying God more than your emotions. It's hurt, but I'm doing it. Y'all quiet up in here. It don't make no sense, but I'm doing it. And if you read the book of Jeshia, uh, you see him on his way. And he's having conversations with the devil. See, one of the devil comes in three different ways. One time he comes as a little boy. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this kind of stuff. And, 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 and he says, are you going to kill my friend? Oh, y'all quiet. And Abraham had to deal with the little boy and call him the devil after a while. And he left. And then he came as an old wise man. Oh, I can't get no church up in here. He came as everything Abraham respected. Oh, y'all quiet. And you got to be careful when the devil comes to you with something or with someone or the form of someone that you respect to get you off target with God. When he finally got through these different forms of the enemy, after he got that last form of the enemy, God said, here's the mountain. Here's what God was doing for five folks that to catch it. And I know I'm boring y'all today, but it's going to be all right. For four y'all to catch it, God said, you went through three times. This is enough because if you go through one more time, you might just lose it. So I have to find the place now. And I'm going to say this to the whole five folks catch it. Sometimes you go through so much hell. The reason why God stops it, because he know you can't make it another day. Okay, you act like y'all ain't never seen it. You act like you ain't never been in hell before and then the next day everything stopped and you felt like you overcame. No, you didn't overcame. God gave you peace because he knew one more day of this, you would have sinned against him. One more day, of that, he, he said, I know you. And I know when you have had enough. I know when you have had enough. I will not put more on you. Good God Almighty, that you're able to bear Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It says there are three types of judgment in the word. The first type is judging others. Y'all all right with me? The second one is judging yourself. And the third one is judge a situation. Now you understand why God says don't judge. He said, because you don't even judge yourself well. Either, you, either you're too good to yourself or you're worse to yourself than you are anybody else. I hope I'm helping somebody with this teaching. So he says, judge not. Don't judge at all. Leave the judging to me. This is when information is gathered and brought to you for a decision or an opinion. It is a form of judging, and God said, be careful how you judge another, for the same judgment will find you. Now, this, now, now there's this dude, not calling no names, that has judged every preacher with their infidelity. He's been making money off of marital failures. Oh, y'all quiet. He has over a million followers, two, three million followers. 
And then he takes people video, he does a duet video, and he destroys them in front of everybody and gets paid for it. Well, the shoe is on his foot this week. Oh, I can't get no church here. I, I said the shoe is on his foot. And now the world is judging him. The same way he judged it, the same way he put it out. Now there's videos with people putting it out on him because he didn't give anyone any kind of mercy when they was making their mistake. So now that his mistake is exposed, and let me say this and the whole five folks go crazy. He was doing it while he was getting everybody else in trouble. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing? You got to be careful of folks that are sinning while talking about your sin. You understand that? And it's just that they ain't got caught yet, and you get exposed every time. But let me say this and make five folks go crazy. Every time God exposes you, that means he loves you too much to leave you in the mess that you're in. I thank God that it hurt, but I got exposed. Oh, y'all ain't going to say that. I said, I thank God that it hurt, but I got exposed. It hurt. Y'all quiet. It took a chunk out of me. It messed up my ego. Uh-oh. It, it, it knocked me down the size. It put me back on my face before him. I didn't want to come out at night. I didn't want to come out the house. I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to go to church. But I thank God he, that when it's all said and done, he gave me strength not to face you, but to face myself again. My issue is not facing none of y'all. My issue is I'm now brushing my teeth with the lights off. I'm washing my face with the lights off. Y'all quiet up in here. Y'all quiet. I got, I got blinds in my bathroom because I don't want to see what I have made of myself and what the enemy has caused to make me look like. Okay. Maybe I'm just by myself tonight. I have become Adam. I have become something that God does not know what he's looking at. I am not what he's created. I've turned into a monster. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I've turned into a monster. Y'all quiet. I turned into a monster. Adam, Adam, where art thou? Where art thou? Where art, what's, where, where is you? Y'all quiet. Mm. Yeah. I can't show myself. Because my sin has shifted me. I've become a shapeshifter. Oh, I can't get no church here. I've become a chameleon. I'm trying to blend in so nobody can't see me. remember John chapter 9 verse 1 through 7 talks about sorry I'm going slow today John chapter 9 verse 1 through 7 and Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him here go information gathering oh y'all quiet master who sinned and it's something when somebody, when you're going through something, they're always thinking you sin to get there. You know, Job was perfect and upright. Y'all quiet. He assured evil. Talk back to me. Hey, Amen. Let me say this and see if five folks catch it to be blessed. It's not that I did something wrong. In this season, I've just been considered. That's all. Y'all. Okay, y'all ain't going to catch that. Oh, no, in this season, I've been considered because the devil thinks God has given me too much. So now God has to show the devil that if I take some things from me, he's going to still praise God. He's going to be like David. I will bless the Lord at all times. I wish I had a church tonight. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. Uh -uh, I ain't do nothing wrong for this. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Finally, in this season, I'm living right. Not quiet, and now I'm confused. Because when I was living wrong, God did something to get me right. Now that I'm living right, it looked like God doing something again. I don't understand it. 
Well, y'all going to act like y'all understand it? I don't understand it. Soon as things start looking good, something flip on me. I don't understand it. Oh, can't get no church yet. Then when I'm doing what it looks like, amen, I am sin. Now those that were pushing me are now pushing against me. I can't get no church in here. Those that would help me now trying to hinder me, I can't get no church here. Same friends, y'all quiet. Same friends that were saying they loved me, now they can't stand me, which simply means this is five folks got to catch it. All they were doing was using Job because you do know Job was a prophet. So when Job was going through, there was no more prophetic, and where there's no more prophetic, there's no prosperity for them. So they was mad at Job because he was... Because he was so messed up that he couldn't hear God no more. Okay. You got to be careful those friends who's only around you to get what God has for them through you. Because once it seems like you in trouble, they don't want you around no more. As soon as you get better, they want to come around. What is God saying? No, 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 no. Don't ask me what God's saying now. What was God saying for you to help me when I was going through? I can't get no church here. I'm sick of these one-side friendships. I can't get no church here. When you're going through, I'm praying. I'm going through, I'm at your house. I done fed you. I can't get no church. I done cooked you something. Y'all quiet. Had death in the family. I was right there. I can't get no church here. Fighting divorce, I was the ear for you to talk to. Now I'm going through my hell. I can't find you. Where you at? I'm closing this series out, y'all. Hey, going back to two. Hey. And the disciples asked him, saying, Master, he was born blood. Who sinned? Who, who did this? Who's responsible? Because anything that God is supposed to see, if it, ain't, if it can't see, it's demonic. Eyes are meant to see. Ears are meant to hear. So now I need to know who's responsible. did this master you tell us because you Jesus we know you you know everything this man or his parents I ain't blaming the parents watch this watch this he says that he was born blind verse 3 here here it is here it is here it is here it is and Jesus answered I'm glad y'all got information. You've asked me all these questions, so now let me give you an answer and see how many of y'all get mad and stop following me. Neither. <laughs> Neither. I'm glad you're trying to get all this information on this man. I'm glad you're trying to write a book called The Gospels, trying to figure out if I'm going to heal a demon. Now you're trying to write it and trying to be theatrical. Now i got to help you and slow you down and let you know this is not demonic, so I'm not casting out a devil. This is a person that was born with a problem. Y'all quiet. Neither have this man sinned nor his parents. But here's what he said to the whole five folks. Jump, don't jump because y'all tired. Whole five folks catch this. But, 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 but this one was created by the beginning of time so God can get some work done here. If I say this and y'all get it, that means God going to bless and heal some of y'all in the next 48 hours. Some of your sicknesses is just so God, y'all quiet, can get some popularity off your mouth. Y'all quiet up in here as long as I live. I, what you say? Your proclivity might just be God's publicity. Somebody put that on Facebook. Your proclivity might just be God's publicity. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, your publicity stunt. God needs some pubs or you're a stunt. He, <laughs> he, he needs you to know what a, mill, a wheel in the middle of the wheel looked like in 2021. He needs you to know what a healer looked like in 2021. He needs you to know what a mind regulator looked like in 2021. 
He needs to know what a heart fix will look like in 2021. I know he did it for Joel, but now he's going to do it for you. Somebody holler, I'm about to be a miracle up in here. No, don't play with it. Holler at her, I'm about to be a miracle up in here. God is about to use me next. I can't get no choice. I'm next on stage. I can't, but in order to get on stage, you can't be afraid to show your marks. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Because in order for him to get the pub, you got to show your mess. In order for him to get the glory, you got to show where he brought you from. In order for him to get the glory, you got to show it before it gets healed. They need to, oh God, they need to see what it looks like on the bad side before God can put it on his good side. Tell, 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 tell your neighbor, I'm about to be a 2021 miracle. This is 2021, right? Oh, I just want to make sure. Right. Y'all pray for me, amen. I forget sometimes. He says, the works of God should be made manifest where? Which simply means this, and I'm sorry that y'all not doing this the way y'all want me to. It simply means this, to heal you, I got to get in you. And great is he. Okay, okay, okay. So your sickness invited God to come in. Uh oh, you thought your holiness did it, but it was your sickness that did it. You thought it was your holiness, didn't you? <laughs> it was your mess that got the message. <laughs> Lord, let me get out of here. I guess I'm teaching good today because I can't preach this weekend. I must work the works of Him. That sent me while it is day. The night cometh. Don't go nowhere where no man can work. So let me say this and see if I can get y'all to jump because y'all feel like y'all warmed up now even though we are an hour in. And that's simply this. It ain't about you. Oh no, it's happening to you, but it's not about you. <laughs> it's happening to you, but it ain't got nothing to do with you. It's got something to do with the person that's got to work the work of God. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, messing, I'm messing a whole lot of y'all up because, you know, y'all want everything to be about y'all. I don't care what you've been through. It ain't got nothing to do with you. You just a vessel. Watch this, you're just a vessel to show how good God is. So watch this, if you're a vessel to show how good God is, why are you taking it so personally? Why are you taking it so personally? Like, God, why are you doing this to me? Why are you? God said, why are you taking this so personally? He said, I told the pastor, apostle to tell you this, and if you jump, you'll get it. He said, I told you to tell you this, whatever's on you, it ain't meant to stay. Okay, there's a scripture in Luke that says, for this sickness is not unto death. Uh-oh, y'all quiet. It ain't unto death. It's that God might be glorified. Would you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, whatever it is, it ain't on you to stay. I don't care what it is, it ain't on you to stay. God is waiting on the right time, the right moment, and watch this, and you with the right situation, the right circumstance, and the right posture so he can do it for you. Next verse. I got two more scriptures, and I'm going to let y'all go. Next verse, verse 5. Come on, shorty. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Come on, let's get it. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Now, 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 I need to say this. I need to say this because God is talking now. I need to say this. He's spitting on the ground to give a messy miracle. 
right? He's going to give a messy miracle. So now my question to God is, what does a messy miracle look like in 2021? What does a messy miracle look like? In two th- I know what it looked like there. It looked like dirt because all he had was dirt. And he picked up the dirt and he spinned the dirt. And he ca- y'all quiet. He tore the dirt to turn it to clay. Clay. He caused the clay to... Y- because man was not born from the dirt. Man was born from the dust. And what is the dust? Dust is dirt that's fumigated with water because a mist came from heavens. So therefore, there was no dirt for Adam. There was dust. So he had to watch this recreate dust in order to make clay to clear his eyes. I need to know in 2021, what does a messy miracle look like? Oh, I like when the doctor's up here. I like that. He spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. Stop that light up there from blinking. I'm on my own time. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, which simply means for five folks that he catch it, he anointed the blind man, which means he was still blind after he did it. See, I, I hate when y'all preach about miracles, but don't preach about process. I can't stand all these prophets. And the Lord said he's going to do it in 24 hours. He didn't tell you that those 24 hours was going to be the most pain in your whole doggone life. You understand that, right? No, no, I want you to tell me you're going to go through hell the next 24 hours. But after this hell is over, you're going to come back better than you went. Now I can respect you, okay? Because you got me talking about a miracle. Y'all quiet. You got me talking about this God is going to do a miracle, and I don't think anything else is going to happen. So when the worst come at me, uh uh-oh, I start doubting God. So I need a prophet to let me know that God has eyes on me, but I need you to stay focused because the enemy is coming to test every word that's coming out of my mouth. You understand that, right? If I say you're going to be blessed, the enemy is going to try to make it look like that you'll never be blessed. You have to get through that. do know uh, a butterfly you can't be a butterfly till he fight the cocoon he's between life and death and let me say this and see a five over, over here jump and if he gets help coming out he's not strong enough to fly uh oh uh oh uh oh and too many of y'all looking for somebody to help you bust out if they help you bust out they also have to fly for you Eagle, eagle sits on the eaglet, sits on the eaglet. The eaglet fights to get out. She fights, he fights, she fights. And then that eagle, mama eagle, grab that eaglet by the neck, take her all the way to the highest tree. And y'all quiet here and says, I love you, but you gotta go. <laughs> and that baby start doing, y'all quiet, that baby start flap, 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 and mama ain't moving. I said, mama up there ain't moving, which simply means this, fly or die, fly or die, fly or die. Oh, oh, and I hear the Holy Ghost said in this season, fly or die, fly or die, fly or die, fly or die. That wings start flapping, pop, 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 pop. and all of a sudden, that, that wings open all the way up, and they start gliding. Then when that thing start gliding, then mama come and glide next to it. Watch this. Now I'm, I'll hold five folks catch this. And the mama get up there, and when it start flying, mama go there and fly next to it. Ask me why. Ask me why. I couldn't save you from killing yourself, but I got to save from anybody else trying to kill you. You understand that? Uh-oh, uh-oh. If you didn't die on your own, you definitely not going to. I can't protect you from yourself. Y'all better hear that. I can't protect you from yourself, but I can't protect you from your enemy. If you, can, if you can survive you, I'll take care of your enemy. If you can survive you, somebody holler, help me survive me. Because God told me to tell you, if you can survive yourself, I can handle your enemies. All right. All right. All right. And said unto him, I got a two more scriptures, prophet, I got to go. Go wash in the pool of Siloam which is by interpretation, sent. Sent. I'm sending you to this pool. 
Now I'm about to say something, Sister McDonald. I'm telling you, it's going to bless you. It's going to blow you. It's going to blow your mind. Absolutely blow your mind. And if you can handle this in the spirit, by next Monday, you'll be feeling better. No. No, I want you to hear it. Because to be a miracle, you got to hear one. Listen. Listen. Unlock your brain now. Because the miracle is not in your body. It's in your mind. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Let me get out of here because y'all say I'm prophesying. That's against the law on Wednesday nights. All right, listen. He went his way, therefore, and washed. Don't go nowhere. And came seeing. I want to say this to you. And if you catch this, it's going to be blessed. You ready for this? Are you ready for this miracle? Messy miracle, right? Mindset miracle, right? Catch this and catch it good. And see if five of y'all over there, amen, give me a high five, but don't knock me over in the spirit. And that's simply this. He says, go wash in the pool of Siloam, right? And the Bible says the next thing, he sent him to the pool, right? And the Bible says, and he went and came back and was able to see. Watch, watch what the Bible did not say. The Bible did not say that somebody guided him there. Okay, forget it. Y'all just missed it again. Y'all quiet. Which means as soon as he, to soon as he went towards the direction, his eyes opened. Y'all quiet. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And, uh and the washing was the rinsing of maybe the cataracts and getting it out. But he was seeing before he got to the pool. What? All he had to do was to point in a direction of where he was sent. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, just point in a direction that your leader send you. That water was nothing but a rinsing. Getting it, getting it clear. Now let me. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 through 7. Y'all give me about 30 minutes and we're done. 8.30, we out here. No, no, no. Y'all not, not excited. All right. Sex Sabbath, chapter 12. No, is that, no? Yeah. No? Yeah. No, 1 Kings 3. Almost, almost, I, I, got, I got excited. I got excited. I got excited. 1 Kings 3, 16 to 18, dealing with the wisdom of Solomon. Now, I told you you had to have wisdom, right? I said, I told you you have to have wisdom, right? All right, we have to have wisdom. Somebody holler wisdom. All right, so he asked God for wisdom, and now God has to prove that he gave it to him. You cannot ask God for anything that he can't test. Oh, y'all just missed that. He asked God for wisdom. The only way that God can test what he gave him was to cause something to happen. That's going to cause you to use your wisdom to, to, to circumvent an issue, a circumstance in your life. So you can say, I want wisdom, but then hell comes and you don't use the wisdom God gave you. All right, all, all right, let me help, let me hurry up, let me, let me. And Rehoboam went to Shisham, for all Israel were come to Shisham to make him king. And it came to pass when Jehovah, the son of Nabat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jehovah dwelt in Egypt. Read. That they sent and called him, and Jehovah and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Jehovah, saying, let's keep going. Thy father made our yokes grievous, now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. Don't worry, we're reading. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people did what? And the people departed. And King Robin consulted with the old men and stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said, How do ye advise that I, answer, I may answer this people? Come on. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants. So if you could be like me. Did y'all hear what I just said? 
if you can be like me, then they're serving you. Watch this, because they're not really serving you. Are, are y'all there? They're not serving you, they're serving me through you. Are y'all still with me? Go to verse 16. Look at verse 16. Because I ain't going to give y'all on that reading. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. First Kings 3 and 16. First Kings 3 and 16. I have it right here. Then came there two women. Right? Okay. Then came there two women that were harlots. Thank you, baby. Unto the king and stood before him. So they both was harlots anyway. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all. I'm coming at you now. You ask for wisdom. I can't make it easy. These are not two good women. These are two harlots. I have to do stuff that'll make a regular person confused. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's it? And, 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 and then came there two women and that, that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. Let's go. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 17. We're going all the way through. Watch this. And he says this. And the one woman said, oh, my Lord, I, I and this woman dwell in one house. All right. And I was delivered of a child with her in house. Are you there? Verse 18. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. Are y'all with me? And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. Are you there? And this woman child died in the night. This woman child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she rose up at midnight and took my son from beside me. While their handmaiden slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in mine. Oh, oh y'all, y'all quiet. Verse 21. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. Are, are y'all still with me? And the woman said, nay, but the living is my son. And the dead is thy son. And, and this said, no, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. So they're fighting now. Thus they spake before the king. Verse 23. Then said the king, the one said, this is my son that liveth, thy son is the dead. And the other said, nay, but thy son is dead, and my son is living. And the king said, bring me a sword. And, and, and the king says, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. Are you there? And the king said, divide the living child in two. Y'all can't agree. My wisdom says, we cut this child in half. None of one y'all want to say, which is this your child? No one wants to take authority or, or possession of the dead one? Both of y'all going to say this one is y'all's? It's some kooky kind of wisdom. Give me a sword. Cut this child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman who the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, oh, my Lord, give her the child. See, listen, listen, listen. I ain't reading no more. See, 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 when you are a real mother, Oh, I can't get no church in here. When you are a real mother, watch this. And even if it looks like what's this living is about to die, you rather the child be with someone else than the child be dead. Y'all quiet up in here. It wasn't his wisdom. He was banking. He was banking on the bowels of the real mother to say something. The other one says, cut it in half. 
but neither one of us can have it. Oh, yeah. Watch, verse 26, this make the woman who the living child was, give it to her, your infant son. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living, living child, right? Give it to her. And in no wise slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Go to the next verse. We simply mean this for five folks that are catch it. One was a harlot, watch this, by lifestyle. One was a harlot by force. Somebody just missed that because the harlot by lifestyle says, I don't need anything anyway because I'm getting ready to go back and have some more sex and do what I need to do. But the one that was forced into it says, maybe this baby can help me stop doing it and I can take care of this child and find me a husband and no longer have it done anymore. Which means this for all you judgmental people. Everyone that does stuff, don't do it because they want to. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's why you can't judge their intent when they're caught in their mess. So y'all catch folks and be like, yeah, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, she ain't nothing but this. She ain't nothing but no, no, no. What if what if I don't have what if I don't have nothing but this? What if this is all I have? What if I'm forced into this? What if I'm trying to make ends meet and nobody else is helping me? And now I'm sitting here stuck in this, waiting on somebody to see me and discern I'm in trouble so I can stop doing it. But until you discern me, I gotta do what I gotta do. You understand that, right? One is a harlot because they want to be. They nasty. The other one, she's not that type. You can tell by what they're saying. One says, no, give her the baby. Let me say this. The other one says, uh-uh, I really don't want this baby. Because I'm going back to work. I'm just trying to make sure she don't get nothing. Oh, oh y'all just missed that. Y'all quiet. Y'all act like y'all looking at me like, ooh, why she do that? Same way you do it. So I said, I don't want it. I just don't want her to have it either. Kill it like we killed the other one. Kill both babies so we can go both go back to work. Because one could have been the other one's madam. And if I let you be a mother, I lose money. If I let you be a mother. I might lose money. <laughs> then the king answered and said, give her the living child. And in no wise slay it. She is the mother. Last scripture, 2 Samuel chapter 12, 1 through 7, and we out of here. Second Samuel chapter 12, 1 through 7. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. One through seven, right? Didn't I say one through seven? Well, go to one. Go to sheesh, Lord. Shorty back there acting up. And the Lord, I just started calling her that today. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him. Give you a little backdrop. He just finished doing what he did with Bathsheba, just killed Uriah. He, he covered it up. He's now, not, he's now not just an adulterer, but he's a murderer. Right? If you lie, you steal. Steal, you kill. <laughs> and, if you, and if you kill, you cover your neighbor's wife. That's what Pastor Barrett say. But he did all those things, though. <laughs> <laughs> Lied, killed, killed, and covered his neighbor's wife. I'm going to tell Pastor Barry, that's in the Bible. And the Lord said Nathan unto David, and he said unto him, and said unto him, there were two men in one city. See, all you prophets better start hearing this kind of conversation. All y'all talking about, I rebuke you in Jesus' name, you're going to get slapped. And kicked out of a church. Oh, y'all quiet, and kicked out. <laughs> 
the over, buddy. Church don't take that no more. You got to be a whole different kind of prophet if you're going to last in the church. Came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. First thing he's telling them is, you was too rich to even do this. You know how many concubines David had? And how many wives he had? And you got rid of all that to deal with this woman that was taking a shower outside. He must have been something else. But the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, that's Bathsheba, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with them, which means there was in a happy marriage. And with his children. Now, 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 let me say this too. Let me say this too and see if anybody catch the history of this. Bathsheba is the daughter of, of, no, no, Uriah is the son of David's best friend. Now, see, I didn't know that. David kills his best friend's son. Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. Best friend. I said best friend. They grew up together with them and with children. That means they had children. It, died, it, it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and laid in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. That's how close they were in that marriage. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared to, make, to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the warfaring man that was come unto him. But took the poor man's lamb dressed it for the man that was come to him. Now, what he's talking about is the servant that was sent to go get Bathsheba. Preparing it for the warfaring man. The warfaring man is David. Now, what you do also have to understand this, and I hope I will catch it because you're learning something, and that's simply this. David's biggest problem was he should have been at war with his people. He decided to stay home. I don't mind. Devil's workshop. He had nothing to do. He's supposed to be at war. All right. All right. Y'all looking at me like y'all read the Bible. We're going. And David's anger was greatly kindled. Now, this is what this is what I call the last portion, what I call judge yourself. You, you better be careful having a conversation with your leader and they tell you a story. And now you mad. Oh no, because you don't like the story. And you figure because it ain't you, you can judge it. Oh y'all, oh y'all just missed it. Because it ain't you, you can. So David is not thinking about it being him. So now he's using all of his strength as a king. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, against the man, against himself. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, make a decree the man that have done this thing shall surely die <laughs> next verse and he, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had he judged himself he said his, he, was, he was a pitiless man. Y'all quiet? He, he said he had no pity, no empathy, no sympathy. He should die. Chapter 7, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Now I know what your judgment was. But here's what God says. Oh, y'all quiet. Because watch this, you can't tell a man who's over you what God says until you break down what he says. Uh oh, y'all quiet. See, he had to break down what David said before he can introduce 
God because you're my king. You're my apostle. You're my bishop. I dare not come at you. Oh, y'all quiet. Look at y'all. I got to be careful how I talk to you. I got to be careful how I talk to your wife. I got to be careful how I answer my leadership. Y'all ain't going to clap. That's okay. Y'all ain't got to clap. Thou the man, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed the king over Israel. We're going to go to the next verse. Get it ready. And I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. You know you were talking when God started telling you what he did for you. I'd rather he just tell me what he's going to do. You know, I'm just going to bust you up. You know, no, Bishop, you're going to get bust up. Okay, Lord. But when he started, started saying stuff like, let me hit you. Let me help you. What? You should have been dead. You knew something come behind that day. <laughs> Go to verse 8. Watch this. Watch this. And I gave thee thy master's house, which means your father's house, and thy master's wives into thy bosom. And gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, this is where I get messed up at. Because this is where the punch comes in and I'm closing. This is where the punch comes in. If that was not enough, I hope somebody catch this prophetically. I would have moreover have given unto thee such and such things. What he said, and I hope somebody catch this, I'm closing, I got to go. If you would have asked for Bathsheba, I would have killed Uriah for you. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all just. Uriah time was up anyway. Bathsheba was going to be Solomon's mother. Excuse me, yeah, Solomon's mother anyway. Because if it wasn't to be, she would have never had him. The issue was, watch this, God had to kill the bastard. Because the next king could not be a king of adultery. Oh, y'all, y'all. He had to kill the bastard. He had to kill what you created. You out, you tried to out God me. And so I have to destroy your creation and give you what I want you to have. Here's, here's the part that I was talking to somebody about the other day. We're going to talk about this. So, and I didn't know I was going to be in the sermon. I said, David messed up a lot of things. Catch this. He messed up Uriah. He messed up his own life. But here's, I'm going to say this, and I hope every woman appreciates this. He also made Bathsheba go through the worst hurt of her life. Because she had to watch her child die. Oh, y'all, y'all. And then she had to know the reason why my child died is because you touched me. And I ain't at fault because I'm a wife, watch this, and one of your servants who had to give you what you wanted because you was my king. Woo! You was my king. I couldn't tell you no. <sighs> okay, I'm closing. I'm closing. And now I have to deal with this death. I had to deal with death behind obedience. <laughs> I'm closing. I had to deal with death. I did what was right. You asked me for what was wrong. David said, Gets up, he leaves Nathan, or Nathan leaves him because they're in the bedchamber. They're not in the congregation. They're not outside. They're in private quarters. When Nathan says this, because Nathan is the right kind of prophet, he discerns much, 
more than likely he said what he said and turned away. And said, now it's between you and God. I'm not going to watch and see you. See, 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 because my because as a prophet, it ain't my job to see you cry. Nor is it my job to see you grovel. Nor is it my job to, 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 for me to see you as an ordinary man. I have to leave you so you can stay super in my spirit. Oh, I have to leave you so you can stay. You must remain anointed in front of me. And I have to leave you because I can't see you like this and still respect you later. Nathan said what he said, and I promise you he turned around and walked out and closed the door behind him. And when he closed that door, David went to sackcloth, which is the priestly naked. It's not naked as in nothing. But if you see me in my full garb and you just see my cassock, that's naked. Okay, once I put my shamir on, that's, that's prophetic. That's the prophet and I put my, my, my stole on, that's the priestlyhood. If I just have the cassock on and cassock alone, then I'm coming here to preach to you as a naked man. Oh, y'all, y'all, okay. I'm coming to bear all before God. And because he's a psalm writer, y'all ain't going to say nothing. A song birthed. Worship birthed even in his mess. Oh, that's how I can tell y'all not worshipers. Because even in his worst, worship popped up. Wash me with hyssop that I might be clean. Purge me, uh-oh, that I might be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Even in his worst moment, worship shows up. Standing all over the building. What's my verdict? What's my verdict? What's the decision? Is, what, is, what is the decision God is making? Well, they wanted information on the blind man. God didn't give him information. He just gave him a miracle. the information there's no information to talk about what happens when somebody wants charges but they all get dropped that's next Wednesday that's next Wednesday what happens when your enemy wants you charged but the, car, the charges automatically get dropped but they want you dead want you out the way. Oh, y'all quiet. They want you out the way. You do know that people come after you because they want you out the way. And it's funny how they want you out the way like they can do what you do. And I tell people all the time, if you can't replace it, stop trying to kill it. How you gonna kill your pastor and you can't pastor? How you trying to destroy your apostle and you're not an apostle? can't kill. You got to replace it. You got to be able to do it as well as the person doing it too. Hallelujah. I hope that this series has blessed y'all. I do. I hope it has. Got Sunday, we got full millennials day. These young ladies are flying in Friday. They're excited. They're super excited. They're online now, matter of fact. They're super excited about coming to, and I need all of you in the house on Sunday. Somebody say amen. We got to stop taking these breaks. Half the church come and half the church don't. I come against that curse. Get consistent. Somebody say amen. Get consistent in God's house because we're going to want consistent blessings from God. Inconsistency can act can ask for consistency. Let's do better. Somebody holler, let's do better. Amen. I'm not about numbers, but I'm about people. I'm not about numbers because
If I was about numbers, I'd try to go and jump and pack this house. I'm not about that. I'm about people. Absolutely about God's people and want God's people to be in place so that we can make God proud. Period. That we can make God proud. Um, and so we want to make sure we do that. Um, I'll let y'all know tomorrow whether I have millennial prayer night tomorrow night. I'll let you know before noon. If I let you know before noon, that means everybody from 18 to 39 should be in this building tomorrow night. Because if we do it, we're going to come in here. We're going to seek the face of God. We are going to seek the face of God. And we're going to push God so that God can give us a miracle this weekend. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some things don't happen but by fasting and praying. We can't, we got to stop having all these services and no prayer be like the church of Ephesus. I have an art with you. You're doing a lot of good work, but you forgot your first love. When am I going to be invited? How are you in church and you ain't invited God? Programs don't invite God. Prayer does. I'll say it again. Programs don't invite God. Prayer invites God. Amen. So let's make sure that we do better. Let's continue to pray for the world. I'm I'm in constant prayer for this vaccine and everything that's happening with it and the silly people that are that are speaking against it and letting their guards down and calling uh, these next surge is not about it's really not about uh, the sickness this next surge is about the people because if everybody continued to do what they're supposed to do this thing would be all the way down by now but now because the CDC is saying certain things. Now people are going to Miami and flooding the doggone streets and then they're going to get sick and go home. And it's crazy because we are, we are now seeing how undisciplined the world is. And how undisciplined the church is. Because churches are doing it too. They ask me all the time, Doc, y'all still wear masks? I said, we're going to wear them until they say not to. Can you come preach for me? Y'all wear masks? No, we're not wearing masks. We blessed. I said, well, you blessed without me. I'm glad I don't have to preach for money no more. I, I preach for assignment. <laughs> we have to be about our father's business. We can pray and, and seek God and pray, but the Bible but also say to be obedient to leaders, to our government. Oh no, that's what the Bible said. Pray for them and obey them that have the rule over you. That's Bible. But a lot, a lot of y'all don't like Bible. So let's continue to pray. Let's get ready for this weekend. Let's get ready to uh, seek God. I got a lot of folks coming to town, people from my home state, my home church. So I'm going to be very, very busy. Amen. My back is finally starting to act right. Amen. Woo! No, man. Y'all don't know, boy. Y'all don't know. I, I'm feeling like I'm getting fat right now. I do. I feel like I done gained 10 pounds. No, I won't. I'm going to be fine until I get back in the gym Monday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for my mind. That's all. Lift your hands. Coach, you're going straight to heaven. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Didn't go to heaven because heaven and earth shall pass away. <laughs> she said, I don't care. As long as I don't go to hell, I'm all right. <laughs> Amen. We're going to have church this weekend. We're going to have some major church this weekend. Amen. We're going to have some major church this weekend. It's going to be good. Father, we thank you now for such an amazing day. We thank you for this teaching on today. We thank you for how you broke the word down. We thank you how you're consistently encouraging us. You're consistently encouraging us and blessing us. You are, being, you are very consistent in what you are saying to us and what you mean to us. We thank you. And God, we promise you to return consistency back to you. We promise you that re to return the love that you give us. We promise you to return the praise and the worship that you deserve. Now, God, bless those that are traveling into this city for this great weekend service. 
God, I ask you to cover them. I ask you to protect them and get them here safe and sound. Now, God, as we leave this place, but not your presence, I would that you go with us and be with us until we return to give your name the glory, the honor, the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you.